So we're trying to find sine 2 theta and cos 2 theta and we're given that cosine theta is negative a third and theta terminates in the third quadrant. Uh, we always have to keep in mind the restriction um, the restriction that that is to say that it terminates in the third quadrant. Our, our first and probably the easiest thing to do in these sorts of questions is to find cos 2 theta first because there's a variety of ways of finding it. Uh, you know that cos 2 theta is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta, which can also be taken to be 2 cos squared theta minus 1. So by substitution, we already know what cos theta is, so squaring it is just taking a negative a third and squaring it, then followed by a multiplication by 2 and then a subtraction by 1. Negative a third squared is 1 ninth. 1 ninth times 2 is 2 ninths. We subtract 1, we get negative 7 ninths. That's because we're subtracting 9 over 9, so 2 minus 9 is negative 7. And sine 2 theta um, notice we can actually, even though it's 2 theta, we can still apply the Pythagorean identity. It's a, a very valuable tool. Uh, so given that we already know cos 2 theta, we can square sine 2 theta and find sine 2 theta on the cheap now that we know cos 2 theta. Now the Pythagor Pythagorean theorem with double angles goes sine squared 2 theta plus cos squared 2 theta equals 1 and 2 theta is nothing more than just another angle and we can replace cos 2 theta with negative 7 over 9 and square that don't forget to square it and uh, set that to equal 1 sine squared 2 theta equals 1 minus 49 over 81 which is what negative 7 9 works out to when you square it and um, then you work out 1 minus 49 over 81 which uh, turns out to be I believe 32 over 81 and then take the square root of both sides. A 16 comes out of the square root, uh, meaning you get 4 root 2 on top, and on the bottom you get 9. And here's the second question. So secant theta is 1 over cos theta, so that's uh, if secant theta is root 5, then cos theta must be 1 over root 5, or if you like, root 5 over 5. Cosecant theta, well, we're given that if it's negative, then sine theta must be negative, because cosecant is 1 over sine, and sine is negative in quadrant 3 or quadrant 4, given the cast rule, if you remember. Um, but the fact that cosine is positive means that theta must be only in one of those quadrants. So we choose then quadrant 4 because that's where cosine is positive and sine is negative. Now, once again, we're finding sine 2 theta and we're given secant, which we can just suss out cosine being 1 over root 5. And we can just apply the formula 2 cos squared theta minus 1 and that's 2 times 1 over root 5 squared minus 1, which is 2 fifths. And when we subtract 1, we get negative 3 fifths. Now, it's in quadrant 4. Well, no, no, sorry, that's cos 2 theta. So, um, I was going to say that it's positive, but it's not. not. Not if it's 2 theta. So, sine squared 2 theta um, plus cos squared 2 theta, which is negative 3 over 5 all squared, equals 1 using the Pythagorean identity. And now we solve for sine 2 theta, and uh, that's 1 minus 9 over 25, and we get 16 over 25, and then take the square root. And when we do, we remember we're in quadrant 4, so the answer is going to be negative. Negative 4 over 5.
And here's question three. So what's different about this this time is we're finding sine and cos given sine 2 theta or cos 2 theta. So given a, a double angle um, trig function, uh, we find the original sine and cosine. So we're told that sine 2 theta is negative 4 fifths and, pi, and 2 theta is somewhere between pi and 3 pi over 2, which means that it's in quadrant 3. Now if we divide the inequality by 2, we get pi over 2 less than or equal to theta less than or equal to 3 pi over 4 which means that it's in quadrant 2. Um, now cos squared 2 theta and side squared 2 theta well we already know we already know what sine squared 2 theta is we can just take negative 4 fifths and square it so then that's 16 over 25 so finding cos squared 2 theta is a, a matter of subtracting 16 over 25 from 1 and we get 9 over 25. The Pythagorean identity is applied multiple times so you see the steps here. Um, cosine uh, 2 theta is uh, negative 3 over 5 which is given. Um, we then uh, work that out in uh, one of the double angle formula identities and uh, we end up with cos uh, theta equals 1 over root 5 or negative root 5 over 5 because we're in quadrant 2. Applying the uh, Pythagorean identity again and solving for sine, uh, sine theta, we get that sine squared theta is uh, 24 over 25 and when we work out sine theta, uh, taking the square root of both sides, we get 4 root 6 over 5. And here's the fourth and last question. Now once again we're finding sine and cos theta given a double angle formula. And this is a strange one. This is tan 2 theta. I don't normally give the formula for tan 2 theta, although it's in the back of our textbook. But we already know the formulas for sine 2 theta and cos 2 theta. We can certainly say that tan 2 theta equals sine 2 theta over cos 2 theta. And also, 2 theta is given to be between 3 pi and 4 pi, but when we divide by 2 across the inequality, we get 3 pi over 2 uh, to 2 pi as being the position of theta. Tan 2 theta, like I said, can be sine 2 theta over cos 2 theta. Uh, not exactly sure if that's useful because we can also use Sokotoa, and so that means you know we can see from the fraction opposite is minus 12 adjacent is 5 and given that the hypotenuse must be the square root of of the of 12 squared plus 5 squared we we're working with the square root of 169 which is 13 and by the way the hypotenuse is always positive so we can just be safe in saying positive 13 so sine 2 theta is that therefore negative 12 over 13 and cos 2 theta must be um, 5 over 13. Now, if we're um, if we're going to be working with um, cos two theta, we're given that it's five over thirteen. We now make that equal to co two cos squared theta minus one, and uh, bring the one, negative one over, adding one to both sides. We get eighteen over thirteen. We divide by two. We get nine over thirteen equals cos squared theta and then take the square root of both sides. Notice we have a 13 on the bottom which is prime so we end up with 3 root 13 over 13 being cosine. Well first of all we have um, the cosine of theta being 3 over root 13 or 3 root 13 over 13 and uh, we can now uh, plug that into the Pythagorean identity by squaring it and uh, we just get 9 over 13 that way. Um, or 3 root 13 over 13 squared but anyway when we take away that from 1 um, by bringing it 
bringing it across the equal sign, we get 4 over 13. Um, and then now uh, we have to take the square root of that. So then um, that means we get 2 over root 13 or 2 root 13 over 13 for sine theta. Okay. And you can see here the answers are summarized. Cos theta is 3 root 13 over 13. Sine theta is negative 2 root 13 over 13 because we're in quadrant 4. Thank you for watching.